Hello, today I'm going to present a topic on Tabby with balloon cracking remodeling that I did recently at the Brazil TVI meeting. Here are my disclosures. Why are we balloon fracturing and valve in valve tabber? Well, many surgical valves have smaller internal diameters than the implanted transcapital valve. And also severe PPM or prosthesis patient mismatch exists more in surgical valve, especially in smaller valves. And with severe PPM, it cannot be fixed with valve in valve tabber. Also, with transcapital valve under expansion, you might need to leave the pinwheeling, halt, and early structural valve degeneration. So that's why I think we should strive to optimize THB hemodynamics after valve in valve tower. So you can see that in the vivid registry led by Daniel DeVere that you have pre-existing severe PPM, you're more likely to have high mortality at one year. And this is especially the case in smaller surgical valves. And you can see that here in terms of the video showing that the effect of transcapital valve under expansion. This is before valve fracture on the left side. You can see the pin ruling that the valve is incompletely expanded. After valve fracture, you can see certainly it's better expanded, more like a classic Mercedes-Benz sign. You can also see that on CT from the Vancouver group that if you post fracture, the frame expansion with the balloon expandable valve inside the mitral flow valve, in a, which is a small surgical valve in this case, will be better expanded compared to before without fracture. Now, there are situations where there are absolute contraindications to valve fracture or remodeling. First is annular enlargement or root enlargement. So because there's a patch sewn in, you do not want to fracture because they'll disrupt the suture line there because the ventricular aortic junction has been now changed. The other situation is you have an aortic root replacement, either of a biobantol uh, or some kind of valve sparing root replacement. You cannot fracture the surgical valve uh, or the expand the native valve because you can disrupt the aortal uh, ventricular continuity. There are other complications also with balloon valve fracture. You can see that this paper from Structural Heart, I won't go into the details, but that includes coronary obstruction, leaflet injury, acute aortic insufficiency, and others. Include all my, such as valve migration. We've recently published a review on TAV in SAF or surgical valves that has been found to be very helpful. But one of the things to consider, obviously, is not just the type of valve, but also the failure mechanism, what the measurements are of the surgical valve, and finally, which transcaster valve to implant. The new valve in valve app, you can see that here is very user friendly. That is a, an app you can download for free on both Apple and Android platform by Vini Bapad. And you can see that you can just simply pick the surgical valve and it'll recommend which transcapital valve that will be reasonable to implant. And you can see each surgical valve is different in terms of the fluoroscopic signature. So you need to do a fluoroscopy in addition to CT to evaluate the dimensions and also coronary clearance. And each surgical valve can be different in terms of the definition of the stand ID or internal diameter or versus true ID. On the left side with a porcine valve, we can see the stand ID is bigger than the true ID. However, as you go to the externally mounted pericardial valve, you can see that it's the same as true versus standard ID. So you need to be aware of the differences across the valves. Now, the latest version of the app actually tells you whether the valve is fracturable or not. You can see on the left side, the mitral flow and the magnet ease can be fractured, and you can see the recommended balloon fracture for the specific valve size. On the right side, you can see the Hancock 2 and the trifecta are not fracturable, and you can see that being labeled as such. And this is also consistent with the paper that was published in 2017 by Keith Allen's group on annual thoracic surgery about which valve can be fractured. However, there are some valves that can be remodeled but not fractured. What that means is that you can balloon stretch the valve and the frame to encourage the valve being uh, a little bit larger than the nominal diameter to be able to reduce the risk of the transcaptor valve under expansion. And you can see that here on the middle column that these valves can be remodeled, just not fractured because they are made of metallic frame. And if 
to so you can see the abelus and the Hancock two cannot be fractured or remodeled. The number of CT parameters to be evaluated to determine valve and valve tower feasibility. And in terms of the balloon bubble plastic technique, you can see that here, the actual balloon is high, performed the high pressure. And you can see at the end that there's a snap on the fluoroscopy. And you can see this is the setup in terms of how it's done. You use a 60 cc syringe with contrast. You put it into a three-way stopcock. It can be a four-way high pressure stopcock. And you can see that here, you connect it to the inflator. So you first in, uh, empty out the syringe. And then after that, you switch the stock over and then you inflate the inflator to a high pressure setting until the valve uh, is fractured. Now there's been debate whether before or fracture afterwards, you can see there are some advantages and disadvantages with the advantages of fracture before. Uh, it'd be easier to implant the, the self-expanding valve because it's less oversized and mismatch. Uh, you can also confirm that it fractures successfully. However, it can cause a QAI. You might need to implant the valves very quickly to avoid cardiac arrest, or you can pace the patient out of the AI to maintain hemodynamics. Balloon fracture afterwards, you can have a better expansion, especially balloon expandable valve. There's less risk of a QAI, but you can risk device migration or acute injury of the leaflets of the new valve, and you might have to put a third valve in. Uh, and of course, we don't know the durability of high pressure against the transcaptor valve leaflets. So here's an example of an 80 year with 23 millimeter magna. You can see how on the left side, see how the valve fracture, you can see the frame expanded at the, uh, under high pressure inflation. And you can see that with the implant of the 26 Evolute, you have a less of a mismatch, and you can see you have a very nice implantation with well expansion of the new valve. Other things to consider is you want to use external sheath to avoid sheath exchanges, especially you want to do pre-BVF. Uh, you want to have the valve ready to go with the transcaptor valve. There's acute AR risk. Uh, you need to alert anesthesia and try control pacing. You very rarely have cardiac arrest. We've never had one in our experience. And you can deliver the valve relatively quickly, especially balloon expandable, but also self-expanding to go quickly to 80% to relieve the AR. And of course, you can always recapture, reposition if you need to. And again, we were, we never need a CPR or ECMO or primary primary bypass, but the patient's blood pressure would be reduced and low. So you need to alert the anesthesia to resuscitate the patient. For post BVF, you don't want to implant the valve too high to start with because then you risk the valve for showing more and migration and pop out. You want to position the balloon more ventricular uh, during the BVF to avoid lethal injury. It's going to be a longer pacing run to uh, lead to successful fractures. And as teacher need to know, you might need to have a second valve uh, ready to go just in case. And if the leaflet is pinned open after the fracture, you need to use a catheter or pigtail to push the leaflet back down to restore the valve competency. So there have been two major presentations uh, that were done recently. One is to a TCT last year that's now published in JAK Intervention uh, on BVF at an impact on valve pinot tablet with the safe and free or safe and free ultra valve from the TBT registry. You can see that here, this is the series of almost 3,000 patients. They have 600 pa uh, patients that have balloon fracture and they compare those with pre-fracture versus post-fracture. And you can see that here in, uh, as well on echocardiographic outcome. You can see most of the sites in the United States do not do fracture and only very few sites do more than 10 fractures. Most of them do pre-implant uh, uh, pre um, 18%. Most of them do it afterwards. And you can see that here, the median number is very low. However, what interesting to finding is that uh, if you have fracture, it does increase the all-cause mortality and cardiac mortality. However, if you look at the fracture versus no fracture, Clearly, there's an increase in aortic valve area and lower gradient with fracture. And if you look comparing before or after fracture after, there's also increased mortality. If you uh, fracture beforehand, uh, maybe because of cardiac arrest, and you can see that here only post fracture has demonstrated an increase uh, in the uh, valve area afterwards and also a reduction in gradient. So at least with the balloon expandable valve, it's interesting to see the balloon valve fracture actually increases mortality risk 
uh, especially when the fracture is performed before the valve goes in. Uh, however, there's also been improved hemodynamics with balloon valve fracture, particularly if you fracture after the valve is implanted. So there's still a lot of uh, data to be uh, gleaned towards this uh, interesting study. The other study that's been presented just at ACC was the same group by Kevan and Adnan on BBF in a with an Evolute platform. And you can see with a similar comparison, fracture versus no fracture, and P pre versus pro fracture with matching number of variables. And you can see that here in terms of the number of pre versus post fractures is uh, relatively 37 to 61%. You can also see that only 600 patients or so were fra had fractured, similar to the balloon expandable valve. You can see that the uh, valve that were fractured had higher percentage of smaller transcaptor valve, which makes sense because they have a smaller surgical valve. However, there were no adverse events associated with fracture versus no fracture in the with the Evolute platform. And you can also see that uh, with 30 days, there were also no difference at all in terms of safety outcomes. Now, when you compare pre versus pro fracture, you can see again that there were post fracture had higher number of patients with smaller transcaptor valve. It takes longer, likely because of longer pacing run and also a little bit more fluoroscopic time. However, there were absolutely no difference other than cardiac arrest uh, with more with pre-fracture versus post-fracture. You can see that here likely because of acute AR, uh, but there were no differences in terms of outcomes, whether you pre-fracture or post-fracture. So in summary, at least with the uh, core valve, evolute valve, there were no differences in outcomes, whether you fracture or not, versus pre or post-fracture. Uh, there's higher uh, risk of cardiac arrest before fracture, but no difference in mortality. And you can see that certainly it requires more understanding of the mechanism and study. Now I want to turn the attention to a little bit about coronary obstruction with the valve and valve tablet, which is important to look at. You can see that the way to evaluate this is called one, two semi-selective coronary angiography. You want to see there's absolutely clearance with the coronary uh, relative to the commercial post and the leaflet being displaced. And I would say that this is the reason why, because on the left side, currently there's a lot of room to engage the coronary. And, uh, and so valve displacement is gonna be all the way here with the leaflet. So we're not worried about coronary obstruction. Now on this particular uh, right-sided uh, fluoroscope, you can see that the STJ is actually very small. So you can imagine the leaflets will be very close to the STJ sealing off the aortic root. So this place would have a higher risk of coronary obstruction if you do a valve valve tower. Now, in terms of the role of basilica or leaflet management, you can see that it depends on the aortic root morphology we've classified now on this paper a number of years ago, looking at the leaflet extending above the coronaries, and if so, especially above the sound tubular junction, you need to make sure that you have enough clearance of four, at least four millimeters. Otherwise, you should consider uh, basilica or leaflet management before you implant the transcaptor valve. Now, the other important aspect is commercial alignment with valve and valve tower. The reason being, you look at these commercial of the transcaptor valve, they're triangular in shape and they're tall. So if you have one of these commercial posts facing the coronary with valve and valve tower, and if, especially with boron anatomy, you can still risk coronary obstruction. And this example shows that even if you do basilica leaflet management strategy, you can still obstruct the coronary because if you have a commercial post facing the coronary, you now reduce the the split area that perfuses the coronary, so you can still obstruct. So how you achieve commercial alignment, at least with a self-expanding valve, with all three platforms, Evolute, Accurate, and Portico, and El Navator, you can look at the head marker with the Evolute, the uh, tabs of the uh, Accurate Neo and Portico to try to achieve commercial alignment, especially with the cuts overlap view. And you can see that here, this is interesting that with fracture versus no fracture in the bench model, there may be actually some microscopic uh, changes to these uh, leaflets afterwards. And you can see that here, yes, after the fracture, you'll get a better uh, EOA compared to you fracture before with the accurate needle and the S3 valve. However, in terms of ultra structural changes in balloon valve fracture, there's certainly uh, more changes in the microscopic level uh, fracture after uh, rather than without fracture, 
and there are also number of debris that can go into the brain. Uh, you can see that here with fracturing. So certainly I would recommend using cerebral embolic protection in patients with valve and valve, particularly your pendant fracture, because look at how nasty in terms of these uh, valve leaflets are. These are not the same as native aortic valve leaflets. So certainly these debris or uh, calcium deposits and nodules can be displaced more easily than native valve. So I think in summary, balloon valve fracture can improve valve and valve tower, uh, hemodynamics reduces severe PPM and valve under expansion and risk of SVD. I think the valve and valve has an instrumental in guiding which valves can undergo fracture or remodeling and what balloon size. Be aware of high risk of coronary obstruction of valve migration with BVF. Uh, one should aim also for common show alignment with the new tower device going in. There are pros and cons of pre versus post fracture. There are data now suggests, as you saw, post fracture have better yield and gradients, but may have more histological changes. Uh, there's certainly increased risk of uh, valve fracture with balloon expandable valve, but not self expanding valve. And of course, the caution is that if you have root enlargement or replacement before, do not perform BVF. I'd like to thank you very much for attention for this presentation.